You've bought yourself a pre-built PC and you've been gaming on it comfortably for a little while now. Overall, you've been super happy with your system, but you just can't help feeling that there's an invisible itch you need to scratch. Never fear my friends, so that's perfectly normal and in fact, we've got a name for it. That is what we like to call the PC building bug and it sounds like it's taken a good bite. G'day legends, Jono here from Thermal Take Australia and in today's video, I'm going to share with you my recommended first upgrades you can do to your gaming oriented pre-builds. One, upgrading your storage. By and large, most pre-builds come with 500 gigabytes or even smaller sized SSDs. Now I get it, 500 gigabyte does sound like a lot, but when it's your only drive and you've got Windows installed, a few programs and Warzone on there, well, you've probably already upgraded by now. However, if you haven't, I would totally look at either adding an additional 500 gigabyte SSD drive to dedicate all your games, or better yet, adding a one terabyte drive to store your games, programs, and data. Now, considering this is an upgrade video, I would really be looking at going for a nice and fast Gen 4 M.2 if your motherboard has a free slot. Otherwise, a fast 2.5 inch SSD is still a solid option and a little bit more beginner friendly too. If you want to see how to install one of those, you can totally check out a video that we do a real-time install up here. Ultimately, I don't know anybody who doesn't want to load into games or maps faster. So, for recommendations, personally, I love the Seagate Firecuda M.2 520 and 530 models, as well as the WD Black SN 750 and 850 models as well. They're incredibly fast. Optimize your airflow performance. Typically, most pre-builds will come with a rear exhaust fan at minimum, and the more you spend, the likelihood of additional fans being included is high. But still, those additional fans don't always mean they're great performing fans. Now, fans come in all sorts of designs, but my preference is our non-RGB tough fan models. I seriously love how quiet these fans are and their incredible airflow. They're amazing on radiators and as case fans, and if you're a fan of a more stealthy look, then these are right up your alley. However, some of us really do like RGB, and I totally get that, so you might want to look elsewhere, but just pay attention to their intended purpose, as some fans are made to be used as a dedicated case fan, and others are made to be used on radiators. Also, when adding additional fans, it can pay dividends knowing how to set them up for a great airflow configuration. So if you'd like to learn more about that, Michael did a video on the different airflow configs that you can do here somewhere. Replace that box cooler. CPU cooling is important and I know you know that already. However, what you might not know is that while stock coolers certainly do the job, you could actually be leaving a bunch of performance on the table here, Sarah, by not using a more efficient CPU cooler like that of a tower or a sweet all-in-one liquid cooler. A great CPU cooler can make you a cake and let you eat it too. And what I mean by that is you can have a quiet CPU cooler while simultaneously having a greater thermal performance over a standard box cooler. In fact, if you've seen our latest budget build guide, we recommend the Tough Air 310 cooler as new B560 motherboards and Intel chips like the 11400 limit power usage by default as the stock coolers can't efficiently keep them cool. So that could quite literally be a nice chunk of frames you're missing out on in your favorite game. Now I'm not here to debate if you should go with air or water cooling though, that's for another video. But what I will say is you should 100% look into a nice middle of the road CPU tower cooler. In fact, Hardware Canucks have an awesome roundup of entry level ones and our Tough Air 310 model features in it as well. And that wraps it up. It's not a long, extensive list of upgrades, nor does it really need to be. Pre-builds in today's market are becoming more value-oriented than ever, and most don't need an extensive list of upgrades to bring them up to par with a build-it-yourself equivalent. Now, you might have noticed I didn't mention RAM, 
And to be brutally honest, as long as you have 16 gigabytes with a speed of 3000 megahertz or more, that's plenty. And it seems almost all pre-builds these days have that. However, if there's something else you think I've missed, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I know you will. If you enjoyed today's video, please smash that like button or better yet, let us know in the comments below. And if you didn't, smack that dislike button twice. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, ring a ding that bell. <laughs> Made moiselle, mademoiselle, I don't know. Uh, it's on the script to be notified each and every time we upload. Also feel more than welcome to watch some more of our content that should be smothering my face right about now. And I will see you sometime in the future.